there's a number of restaurants around the country that, you know, guys from my former life hang out in. Um, we always met in restaurants. I can name them at another point in time. But I picked these because these are very notorious because of the hits that took place in them. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is blessed on this end. And as always, we give God all the thanks for that. You know, we just got back. It's been a crazy week for us. We did five events all over the United Kingdom. We've been up to Glasgow, Scotland. What a great place. People were wonderful. Really enjoyed meeting with them and having a great event with them. Uh, we've been to Bradford, we've been to Liverpool, and at Liverpool, some of you might have seen, I posted on social media, we were at the Cavern, the place where the Beatles played, I think 292 times, what a great night, they had a great cover band there. Uh, for the Beatles. They were terrific. Sounded just like them. We had such a blast. Closed the place down. A lot of people knew who I was. A lot of Americans in there that were traveling from the cruise ship, so it was great. Then we went to Bradford. We went to Manchester. We were just all over the place. People have been wonderful. I'm telling you, I really, really now have a heart for this entire country. People have been so gracious and, and welcoming, and it's been great. We're going to be doing more things here, introducing the wine and a lot of other things happening, but uh, thank you to the United Kingdom. You're all terrific. And uh, today I'm going to do something that came to mind while I was eating in a restaurant here. There's been some great Italian restaurants. As a matter of fact, one of them uh, was called Verona. The chef was from Verona, and that was in, in Glasgow. And it was one of the best Italian restaurants I ever ate in. It was just terrific. The sauce he made me, it was spaghetti with the... Uh, crabs but the sauce was delicious everything was so good i also had mussels they were terrific the restaurants have been great and as i was thinking i was thinking of some of the uh, famous mob restaurants uh, when i say mob restaurants restaurants that were visited or uh, where mobsters hung out quite a bit many of them in new york you're going to be familiar with some of them but i picked out a couple you know from around the country that i was somewhat familiar with and in each one of these restaurants, something major happened. There was a mob hit, each one of them. Now, there are restaurants all over the country in the United States where a lot of mobsters would hang out in some of the major cities. Florida, there are many. New Orleans, there are many. Kansas City, in the New England states, of course. New York, obviously. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I mean, they're all over the place. But I picked out a couple where mob hits took place. And I think you're going to enjoy it. Maybe some of them are still around. You may want to visit them whenever you get into that city. But we knew where to eat. Whenever a mob guy went to a restaurant, Italian restaurant especially, we spent time there. We knew the food was good. So if we're there, you can come. And hopefully on that night, there will be no, uh, <laughs> no damage done to anybody sitting in the restaurant. But I'm going to go through a few of them. Hope you enjoy it. And like I said, it's been such a great time eating at all the restaurants here. Me and my family, we do everything around food. Everything is just just around food. We love to eat. We plan things around our food. After we leave here, we're going to a few other places, not going to mention where, uh, but we already have the restaurants planned out. And they're always good. My wife and my daughter, they're kind of the, uh, the concierges on this, and they pick out all the great spots. And uh, we just love to eat, and it's part of everything we do. Isn't food something that just brings everybody together? You know, it's food and it's wine, of course. You know, you have a glass of wine, and uh, you just enjoy and relax. You pair it with the best food. It's great. Hopefully, you'll be doing that with Francis Wine. I know you're going to say, Michael, you keep plugging it. Sorry. It's my brand, and we're excited about it. And we want to get it out there. And certainly, people in the UK are also excited about it. So let's go. I picked out eight of them, and I think uh, you're going to enjoy every one of them. They're in different cities. The first one is called Mama Luna's, and it's in Chicago. You know, Chicago is a notorious place. Al Capone obviously made it famous. And then there was a host of very other... Uh, notorious mobsters that were there. Don't have to mention their names. You know who they were. But this place was a Chicago pizzeria. It wasn't really a restaurant. It was a pizzeria. And it was a site of a kind of a New York style hit. 
I don't know if that's good or bad, but New York style, we sort of did things a certain way. And this happened in 1975 to a fellow by the name of Anthony Rettinger. Now, he was a bookmaker, and the guy refused to pay the tax. You know, you're in Chicago, and you're a bookmaker. You just don't operate alone. you got to be paying up to the local mob guys. That's just how it went. I had about 13 bookmakers around me. And the reason they came to me, it's not so much that I pressured them. They needed me. Why? Well, sometimes I had to finance them. You know, a bookmaker gets into a hole where he's got to have enough money to cover his bets. They would come to us. We would fund them. I certainly did. And another thing, remember, a bookmaker gives credit. You don't have to give him a credit card, obviously. You don't put your money up front. He takes your name, he takes your bet, and he puts it on a piece of paper. If you lose, he's got to collect. Well, a lot of times, guys don't want to pay, or they can't pay. So many people bet what they don't have, and then when it comes time to pay when they lose, they can't pay. So what happens? Bookmaker comes to us, or he's with us, and we were pretty good at collecting money, so we took care of that for him. So this fella, uh, Anthony Rettinger, he didn't want to pay. And they, it was kind of like a street tax or whatever. I don't know what the relationship was at that time. But uh, they hired a hitman, the local mob guys did, called uh, Harry Alleman. And he brazenly entered the restaurant in front of everybody. He was with an associate, and he shot Rettinger dead right in front of everybody, in front of all the customers, and then he walked out again. You know, that's how it happens sometimes. You know, there's different ways of doing things in that life. Sometimes, and I don't want to be morbid about it, and I don't want to be, you know, be offensive about it, but sometimes you don't want a body to be found, and you do what you have to do in advance of that to make sure the body is not found. And then there's other times when you just go in and there's some brazen hits and a guy gets hit and that's it. They just leave him there and they're out the door. Well, this was one of those cases. So, Anthony Rettinger pissed the wrong people off. Uh, Harry Alleman, he did the job. I don't know if he ever got uh, arrested and convicted for it. I don't know. But that was one restaurant in Chicago, Mama Luna's. The second restaurant was another one in uh, Chicago called Horwath's, and it's uh, in the city of Chicago. And a fellow by the name of Charles Chucky English, he ran some gambling operations. He had a jukebox rackets on the west side, and uh, he seemed to be winding down his career. His career was almost over. He was trying to go straight, but he must have, uh, again, got the wrong people mad at him because he was leaving that restaurant. He walked out into the parking lot, and uh, somebody shot him right between the eyes. And the cops never caught the guy, whoever it was, he, he got away. And uh, I don't know how much attention they paid to it because during that time, uh, there was a spate of, of killings, uh, mob-style killings in Chicago. Uh, but this site is known for that. It's called Horwath's. If you ever visit Chicago, I think it's still there. Go in, take a look. Just maybe you should avoid the parking lot at night. Who knows? Don't, don't get anybody mad in Chicago. Now, another one you might be familiar with, I'm sure you're familiar with the person, but this happened in the Palace Chop House, and that was in Newark, New Jersey. It's now closed down. They closed the place. But this was the uh, place, the infamous place, where Dutch Schultz, you remember that name, famous mobster way back when. He was an Italian. He was German, I believe. Uh, but he got killed. And uh, a couple of guys came in there, and they shot him and three of his associates. And uh, I think it's widely believed that it was Lucky Luciano, among others, that wanted him dead. And one of the reasons was he was having a lot of trouble and he wanted to, uh, to whack New York's prosecutor out uh, and later became the governor, Thomas Dewey. And for some reason, Luciano and the others, they didn't want that kind of heat on him. Dutch Schilt was kind of a, a loose cannon. I'm sure you know a lot about him. I'm not going to get into his whole story. But that's way back in the day. And uh, the murder was uh, definitely set up by us guys. And when I say us, my former associates. And it's widely believed that Lucky Luciano was the one that ordered that hit. And Dutch Schiltz and three of his associates met their demise in that restaurant, Palace Chop House. Now it's closed down. And that's in Newark. Now this is another one. This was the site of a very famous attempted hit. Uh, the restaurant is called Dante and Luigi's. It's in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I think a lot of mob guys still hang out in that place, or connected guys, I should say, still hang out in that place. But uh, this happened 26 years ago. It was Halloween night, 1989. I don't know why Halloween night seems to be an infamous night. Many of you know that's the night that I got straightened out. I got made. It was Halloween night, 1975. Uh, mine happened in Brooklyn. This happens to me in Philadelphia. But a, a masked man with a trick-or-treat bag walked into the restaurant. He walked straight up to Nicky Scarfer Jr. Now, not Nicky Scarfer, but Nicky Scarfer Jr. And he pulled out a machine gun out of his bag, out of the trick-or-treat bag, and he shot Nicky Scarfo point blank. And uh, I think Nicky felt in his, fell in his uh, plate of uh, spaghetti and clams. And uh, it was a tough sight. 
oddly enough, or miraculously, I should say, Nicky Scarfa survived. He didn't die uh, from that hit. And it was widely believed that Joey Merlino uh, did the hit. Now, I have no idea. I can't verify that. I'm not accusing him. Uh, but the allegation was that it was Joey Molino. I think you know who he is. Uh, he went to prison uh, for some time. He was released, and he's now living in Florida. But uh, the story goes that when Nicky Scarfa Sr. heard about it, he put out a hit and supposedly put a $500,000 contract out on Joey Molino. I don't believe that. You know, when you're in that life, you don't pay people to go out and do the business that is supposed to be done by soldiers in that life. You just don't do it. You know, and uh, I don't believe there was a $500,000 contract on him. I don't know if there was a contract. I heard, you know, through the grapevine that, uh, you know, obviously Nicky Scarfa Sr. was pretty upset about that. I mean, you go in and shoot his son point blank. Somehow he miraculously survives, but I'm sure there was some retaliation planned in some way, shape, or form. But, uh, you know, Sr. has passed away now. By the way, I know a lot of things are said about Nicky Scarfa Sr. I happen to like him very much. He was a friend of mine. I consider him a friend. At one point in time, he and I had planned to unionize the security guards in Atlantic City. Um, and I think I told this story. We were going to use Al Sharpton to bring busloads of people to picket uh, the hotels at that point in time. And we had it all planned and strategized. I had the union. I had controlled it with a fellow by the name of Danny Cunningham. But then we both got in trouble. Nicky had his situation. I had mine. And we never were able to pull it off. We didn't proceed with it. But I like Senior. But this was a place of an infamous uh, mob attempted hit, allegedly by Joey Molino on Nicky Scarford Jr. Machine gun, trick or treat bag, an amazing story. But Nicky Scarfer miraculously, and, and you know, obviously to his satisfaction or his happiness, I should say, he survived that hit. But another famous place. If you ever go there, it's Dante and Luigi's. You can visit it and uh, just watch when you eat your spaghetti and clams and be careful on Halloween night. Another one uh, famous restaurant that's now closed, it was in Coney Island and it was called Nuova Villa Tomato. And this was the site where Giuseppe Jolabos Mazzaria was killed. And, you know, he was really big at the, in his time. One detective called him bigger than Al Capone. So Mazzaria, I'm sure you've heard his name before, big time guy. This was before Cosa Nostra in this country was really organized, before Luciano put the commission together and it was divided into families, you know that. Uh, but it was a spectacular killing, happened again at Nova Villa tomorrow in Coney Island, Brooklyn. Now it's closed. But uh, three men shot Joe several times in the back and in the neck. And uh, he was holding a deck of cards. He was holding cards when it uh, what happened. And uh, he fell over onto the table. Cards were strewn all over the floor. They don't know if it was set up that way, if he was really playing cards, or they put a card in his hand to send a message, whatever the message might have been at that time. I don't know what happened, but uh, that's the way the setup was. And of course, again, it was believed that Lucky Luciano might have planned this. Probably some of the movies that you saw, it, it turned out that way, or they showed it, or they depicted it that way, I should say. Who knows? But I think it's a good guess that uh, Lucky was behind this. The owner was so shaken up by this that he got a hold of detectives when they were investigating it, and he wanted his fingerprints taken, so, number one, that he wasn't affiliated or associated with the crime in any way. Number two, they had a record of who he was. He was just paranoid after this happened, and rightfully so, because I believe a year later, he was shot and killed. So this was, uh, you know, a site of fantastic killing, something that went down in history back in the 20s and 30s. But Nova Villa tomorrow, no longer there, but uh, the site of sensational killing of Joe Mazzaria, Joe the Boss, uh, back in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. Now this one, everybody is familiar with, I'm sure, and that's Umberto's Clam House in uh, Little Italy, New York. Everybody knows the story there. Joey Gallo was dining out on his birthday with his wife, his daughter, a few friends, when uh, a gunman came in, shot him, shot at the table. Fortunately, they only hit him. Joe Gallo ran outside. He died in the street. He tried to go after the assailants, didn't make it. Uh, sad killing. Everybody thought that it was in retaliation for the Joe Colombo attempted assassination uh, that occurred during the Italian-American Civil Rights League uh, rally that we had. And again, that was um, a day I'll never forget. It was a 
second time, really, that I witnessed, um, you know, a mob hit, or an attempted hit, I should say, because he didn't die. The first time uh, was with my dear friend, Artie Entrada, who was beaten badly and killed, and I think I told the story how I went to his funeral, and uh, when I saw his body, it was just uh, shocking to what they had done to him. It was uh, the first time I really witnessed something like that. And uh, then, of course, uh, Joe Colombo, I was there. I was only... Uh, a few steps away from him when he did get uh, shot. Uh, it was a terrible day. What happened there was something that made an impression on me. Not enough to keep me out of the life, but it certainly did make an impression. We knew it happened, or we thought it was going to happen. There was a lot of chatter, a lot of talk on the street during that time. I'm not going to get into who did it. I will tell you this, and I'll say this without a doubt, the movie The Irishman, Sheerhan did not, absolutely did not uh, kill Joey Gallo. He wasn't there that night. It's been debunked both on the street and, of course, by law enforcement. Uh, it was a good movie, but it was fictional in that regard. But Umberto's Clam House, it's no longer there. It's now a place called Da Janeiro. Same style restaurant, I believe. And, uh, you know, the food in, in Little Italy is always good. But uh, I used to go there well before this hit happened. I used to go there, and I used to go to the Lime House. The Lime House was actually in the Chinatown side. It was across the way. Um, and I liked it. We used to go there at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, it brings back memories. My friends and I and my crew... We would be out in Long Island, we would have went to a club, we had a good time, we leave there like one o'clock, and we drive into Manhattan, 40 minute drive, no traffic at that point, and we would sit down uh, in the Limehouse, because it was open really late, and we would have Galamad and Scungili and Muscles and you name it. Yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning. We would just sit there, glass of wine and party. It was great memories. I'll tell you, some of the things that I, I do miss about that life was really the camaraderie I had with my crew and with the guys. You know, there's nothing more special, I think, or more just more likable or more important among men than this fellowship, this brotherhood that we have. I got your back, you got my back. That was very attractive to me. You know, but God is good. I don't have that camaraderie anymore, but I certainly have a strong fellowship with my brothers in Christ. And it's uh, it's kind of replaced that in a way, and obviously it's a better path than I'm on. So but it brings back good memories. And every time I hear of Umberto's, I don't really think of this. I think of the, uh, the great times that I had with my crew back in the day. Another place very, very famous in New York, still there now, it still exists. I haven't gone there in quite some time. They're pretty stuck up in rails. Nice people, but pretty stuck up there. Cash only. They won't accept a credit card, and it takes quite a while to get a reservation to get in there. I'm sure I can get in if I chose to, but probably not the best place for me to go at this point in time. But I don't miss it. There's a lot of great steakhouses all over the country, certainly out in California when I live. Uh, we've had a bunch of them here in London. You know, we went to a place called The Cut. It was terrific. The food was great. And like I said, we've, we've experienced great food everywhere. Did you ever go to an English roast? We've had it twice now. Terrific. You know, the way they serve it, the food is just great. A lot of great stuff here. But anyhow, Rail is a very famous place in New York. You can go there anytime if you can get in. Uh, but this was a place, um, you know, a crazy thing happened. You know, most time when you hear a heckler, you know, you tell them, keep quiet in the restaurant. You know, one thing that drives me crazy, my wife will tell you, my daughter will tell you, whenever we go into a restaurant and there's a table close by, normally, I have to say it, please don't get upset, it's normally the ladies in there that are just laughing so loud at everything everything. I mean, you can hear them all over the restaurant. I'm saying, what could be so funny? Every sentence somebody says is that funny? Everybody's laughing and laughing and laughing like they're the only ones in the restaurant. Drives me crazy. But I wouldn't do what this guy did. It was a guy by the name of Albert Sir Kelly. He wouldn't stop, you know, mocking a Broadway play. I think the name was Rena Strober. It was her performance in Don't Rain on My Parade. And this guy, Albert, was knocking the performance that this woman was doing. And uh, this other guy, Louis Barone, who was a connected guy who was a gangster was getting very upset that he pulls out a 38 and he shoots him in the back that was it in front of everybody he wouldn't keep quiet shoots him in the back that's how he quieted him down he went to jail over this got a couple of years for some reason he didn't get too much time but he got a couple of years and he gets out and mysteriously like seven years later, I think what happened, Sir Kelly didn't die at that point. So Barone goes to jail, 
uh, Sir Kelly somehow survives, but about seven or eight years later, outside of Rails, a suitcase full of bones shows up. Maybe Barone wanted to show everybody that he didn't die then, but I got him later on. You know, that's what appears to me. Again, that's just uh, conjecture on my part. I don't know if it's true or not. But you know what? Rails is not famous for that. It's famous for its food. It's famous because mob guys do hang out there. Celebrities go in there. It's a big hot spot in New York. Uh, now they have one in Vegas that's pretty good. They also have one out in Los Angeles. We went there. The food was great. You don't have to wait to get in. It's a lot easier out there. But uh, if you happen to be in Manhattan and you can get in, visit the place. It's got a lot of history there. And uh, who knows? You might see somebody. Just be sure you don't be heckling anybody because you don't want to meet up with the wrong person like a guy by the name of Louis Barone. Oh, and one more thing, you know, the mob ties are so famous, you know, at Rayo's that uh, Scorsese, he featured Johnny Roast Beef. Remember Johnny Roast Beef uh, in Goodfellas? Well, uh, he used the spot as, uh, as an inspiration to him. Uh, he was very inspired by going to Rayo's and then playing Johnny Roast Beef. So even Scorsese gets involved. All right, we got one more in this list. Everybody knows this list. It was made famous by none other than the Dapper Don, John Gotti himself, and that's Spark Steakhouse, 1986, December 16th, 1986, a date that I'll never forget because three days later, December 19th, was when I got indicted on the, uh, the big gas racketeering case, and I went into MDC to talk on the street. Well, at that time, and in every newspaper, and every media outlet, was obviously the Paul Castellano hit December 16th, 1986, outside of Spark Steakhouse. We know that Paul Castellano was on his way to um, uh, a meeting there with his chauffeur, his bodyguard, Tommy Bellotto. And uh, what happened? You know, some guys in trench coats, they had uh, white trench coats on, I believe, came up to him as he exited the car and they shot him dead. And Tommy Bellotti came around, uh, it seemed, to assist Paul, and he was shot also. The way the story goes, the way I believe Sammy Gravano described it was that Sammy and John were in a car across the street watching it all. You know, certainly you know what happened after that. John Gotti took over as boss of the Gambino family and then obviously he ran it for a few years until he ran into his problems and then he went off to prison and died there in 1992, got a life sentence. So, but Sparks is still very famous. People ask me about it. Michael, you know, should I go to Sparks? People from out of town that had never been to Manhattan before, they always ask if, I should, if they should visit there. I said, hey, why not? You know, it's a historical place right now. It'll go down in infamy forever. I think it was a boost to the business of Sparks, even though they didn't need it. It was always a well-run uh, establishment that has always done pretty good. I've eaten there many, many times during my day had some meetings myself there so but made famous by John Gotti Paul Castellano everybody knows that hit by now so there you have all those restaurants where unfortunately somebody met their demise and uh, there's a number of restaurants around the country that you know guys from my former life hang out in um, we always met in restaurants I can name them at another point in time but I picked these because these are very notorious because of the hits that took place in them so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, what do I always say? You know, I always leave you the same way. But before I do that, please subscribe. We're on our way to uh, a million. We're going to get there, it looks like, by the end of the year. Thanks to all of you for being so loyal and uh, enjoying our content. We appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. We know you have a lot of choices here on YouTube. So thank you very much for tuning in to us, and we'll continue to do our best. I've been a little bit behind because of this tour. We had so many dates. My weekend will be our last two for this uh, this uh, whole United Kingdom tour. So we're excited that it's ending. It's kind of bittersweet because it's been so great, but I'm sure we're going to be back here. A lot of things developing, a lot of opportunities have come my way while I'm here. So thank you to all the people in the United Kingdom, everyone in the United States. You know I love you. So how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. And, you know, I read something in the newspaper today, you know, more police in the United States are retiring and leaving early than ever before. This is what people voted for? I don't think so, because crime is rising all over the country, many, many states, all over the country. It's terrible, because now you don't have police to protect you. What do we do now? I don't want you to answer that, but think about it when it comes to voting in November. What do you really want? You want protection and safety? I hope so. So be safe. Be healthy, do the best you can. Man, I've been eating so much while I'm here because the food is so good. Hopefully I don't put on too much weight, still trying to work out. Be healthy, and uh, as always, and I really mean this, 
God bless every one of you. Be safe, be healthy, God bless, and yes, I will see you next time. Take care.